my framework, I think that I, it's bigger picture, right? So it's not just about socials and storytelling. It's more well-rounded marketing and it always comes back to that. So my business had a rebrand. It used to be called Social Soul and that's what I focused on. And then I morphed more into my personal brand because I'm a brand manager and marketer. I have a marketing degree. Like I have spent years working on some of the biggest brands in the world. And I realized that the conversations were always bigger than just social media because at the end of the day, it's just rented space. You don't own your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, TikTok. You don't own those. And so it's rented. So you have to get really good at marketing, not just social media. So there's a bigger picture. So it comes down to my framework really is figuring out what my client's marketing foundations are and getting those set up so that they are clear about what they are. Welcome to another episode of the Property Management Podcast. Thank you so much for having me in your ears. I'm Kylie Walker, aka That Property Mum. Now, does your week get a little bit out of control sometimes? Do you think, I'm going to be more organized next week, and then the same chaos happens, and you feel unproductive, stressed, and out of control? Well, welcome to my old world. When I started out in business with four young children, I had no systems or processes for anything at home or in my business. I operated in a state of reactivity, chaos and high stress. And my kids and team at work were dragged along for the ride. And I really wish I knew back then what I know now. But even knowing how to structure my week and time block my tasks, sometimes my life falls back into that default of craziness and chaos. It actually takes a heck of a lot of discipline to change your habits and make those small incremental changes in your life that ultimately create the greatest success and fulfillment. And in property management, more so than a lot of other businesses for some reason, maybe it's that default system that many of us are still operating from, the chaos and overwhelm can quickly creep back in and a week can be over and done with in the blink of an eye and we are sitting there like roadkill on the side of the road, wondering what the hell just happened. We did not see that week coming. But I often ask myself, does it really have to be this way? Is there a better way? Or why does my week still end up like this sometimes? Well, luckily for you, I've got someone who is far more disciplined and wiser than me. In this episode, I want to share a guest with you that I met at a business planning retreat. Her name is Hayley Osborne. She's a marketing, socials and strategy queen. In her own words, she's been in business since she was 25 and is obsessed with helping small businesses become the number one in their local community, both online and offline. She's a mum, a wife and has grown a multiple six figure business with two young children in tow. As a small business marketing educator, she's created the Superhero Marketing Membership and has her own podcast, The Hayley Osborne Show. Her ultimate goal, though, is to help businesses grow by infusing your story and personality into your brand and become more aligned with what you do and how you show up consistently online. That is music to my ears, as many of you will know. She also has a great framework to help you get set up for a successful week. Uh, yes, please. And I'm going to start adopting it immediately after this episode. So grab a cuppa, a pen and paper, because you're going to want to take some notes and listen to my conversation with the amazing Hayley Osborne. Hayley, thank you so much for joining me on the Property Management Podcast. I am so glad to have you here. Now, before we dive in, can you please share a little bit about yourself with our audience? Yeah, cool. Thanks for having me, Kylie. My name is Hayley Osborne and I run a business called Hayley Osborne, my name. It's a personal brand, but in that I help small business owners predominantly to build activities and strategies around marketing to have the biggest growth with the least amount of time and effort. And I've been doing it for about six years now. I've had a couple of businesses before this one, which have all been very diverse and interesting, but it set me up to really kind of propel 
in this business because, you know, business, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And I have my own podcast, which I do these things through. I have a membership called Superhero Marketing and I do like marketing strategy, social media strategy, one-on-one coaching and things like that inside my business. And I also work one-on-one with clients to mentor them. And that's kind of me in a nutshell, pretty much. Amazing. (laughs) That is so good. Um, And we are going to dive into some marketing, but to start off with, I want to hear about this framework that you've got to help people build or create a successful week because I work with a lot of property managers and business owners and as you know as a business owner as well we've all got lots of things we're juggling and weeks can quickly turn into chaos and overwhelm so talk me through this framework because I could really use it right now too. Well just to kind of set the picture I have two very small children, like small, like one and a half and three. And so, you know, I do run quite a successful business, but to be able to do that, and yes, the weeks do bleed into one another, I need to have some sort of structure to build quite a successful week and keep the wheels moving. And so I think my number one tip, it's kind of like a Monday hour one, let's just call it that or one hour on a Monday where you spend time doing that top of funnel stuff inside your business, right? Because we're not here for a haircut. Let's be honest, business, we're in, we're in it to create change, build impact, and ultimately create more profit for ourselves to have more choices in our lives. And that's fundamentally what it's all about. And so in order to do that, to grow the business, you need to allocate some serious time aside where you almost set the timer on your phone for an hour, where you do those outward reaching activities like pitch yourself to podcasts, pitch yourself to media, top of funnel stuff, speaking gigs, like that kind of thing. Anything like big picture, get it done on a Monday because then everything else feels really easy. Another thing that I do is I have a bit of a, it's quite big actually. (laughs) So I have a bit of a list that I go through either on a Sunday night or a Monday morning and I clear out everything that I did and tick it off. It's a digital document. So I'm never writing anything. I'm like a paper free freak. So I have my remarkable and then I've got my Word document every week, which has got goals and things like that on it. But one thing that I do that's really important is, and I should probably get it up actually, but it's it's super cool. So it goes over things like, who do I want to connect with? How do I want to feel? What do I want to read? And that really helps to set me up for a really good week. So not everyone do this, does this, but it's four parts. The first part is hindsight. So Like, what am I grateful for? What made me happy? What did you learn this week? What did you learn about yourself this week? What can you leave behind in the next week coming? And then the second part is this week I want to go for a run, drink more water. Intentionally, my one of the things this week is remove social media from my life. (laughs) Good luck with that. Yeah, no, but because the time that you spend is not productive time, right? So like still be active in it inside your business, but don't spend time scrolling because it's like wasted time. So, Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. I, just, I just listened to a podcast yesterday on this topic and they were saying on this podcast that the average person now spends 13 hours a day in front of a device, whether that's your oh laptop, your TV <laughs> or your phone. Like we've only got 24 hours in a day and we're spending it 13 of those hours, which was mind blowing, but sorry to interrupt you. Keep going. Yeah, no, no. So the second part is part is this week. I want to, the third part is habits. So, you know, I'm a big believer that habits create like better discipline and help you get things done. So I'm very active in my life. I play like not play a lot of sport anymore. Now that I've got young children, I used to <laughs> like run and I go to the gym a lot. And I really find that quite therapeutic, get out the clothes the night before that kind of thing. And that as small as these things are, they really help set you up for an awesome week. So I think there's not just like one thing that you need to do. It's all the things and making sure that you are accountable to yourself by following some sort of framework. The last part is priorities. And then that leads into your 
actionable tasks for the week. Uh, that gets divided into, you know, your brand, clients, who are you pitching to, like all that sort of stuff. So it's quite detailed. It might take me about half an hour, but it is so worth it. And then I tend to look at my calendar, like my digital calendar, and I smile and cringe sometimes at the days. So I allocate certain dates for certain things. And if I feel like I can't do all of that in that time, I reschedule them because it's just not possible. You're one person. Well, I'm not one person. I do have help inside my business. But, you know, when you're the head of the business, you have to really prioritize your time and what is the best use of that. So that's kind of like the framework that I use to help me have an awesome week. So for me, I have a few similar things to that. But the thing that I struggle with is being disciplined to do it and just like get that habit of consistently doing it. And I know now the weeks that I don't do it, my weeks end up in chaos. I become very reactive to things and I feel like I feel like I haven't, I'm not productive, I'm not focused. A little bit of that ADHD brain for me. So yeah, so how do you make sure that you fit that into your habits or it, it just isn't a non-negotiable for you? Yeah, look, I think there's a bigger picture here and it's probably like just one word, which is discipline. And there is so many methods out there to set up your week, to manage time, like the Pomodoro method and this method and that method and stuff that's come out of universities and this and that. But I think fundamentally it all comes down to discipline. So if you don't have that right, I feel like the rest of it will fall apart. And I think that's the number one attribute that's really helped with my success in business is having discipline. And that has come from a really young age for me. I've always played competitive sport. I've always kept like fit and healthy just as a byproduct of that because you realize that you can't have one without the other. And so that's set me up for, you know, business, I guess, without really knowing. And so now having children thrown into the mix, because I do have a lot of working mums in my community. Talk to me how, because obviously, you know, you set yourself up for your week and then you get a sick kid and you've got to throw that into the mix and you miss a day's work looking after them. So how do you, I guess, juggle, I don't like using the word juggle, but integrate all that. Blend all that. Yeah, blend all that. Yes. (laughs) Well, to be honest, like I haven't really had to tackle that yet. I know that's a terrible answer, but I have the beauty of my mum. She lives next door, which is so handy. (laughs) And my husband also works from home and our kids aren't at school. So I don't really know what that feels like. So when I have meetings, like They just, it gets juggled and I have had sick kids, so I know what that's like, but that kind of gets taken care of. But I will say I did get to the end of last year and I was like, this cannot go on like this. I was so, so busy in just in meetings and things like that. So one thing I did do is I knew that if I wanted to scale my business, I had to remove one of my income streams from my business that wasn't serving me. And I knew it to my core. I knew it all through last year that I had to take that off. And it was huge. So I mentored for a federally funded initiative, which was huge for small business, but it took up so much of my time. And I knew that I had to remove that to be number one, like more available, not so stressed. And you know what? It was so ballsy and gutsy. And I was like, it's one of those things, right? When you're taking away that consistent income, Not that it was a full-time job or anything, but it was, it was leads being fed to me, which was easy, but I knew anyway. So I removed that from my life, freed up so much time on my business actually grew. I had my biggest month in business in February ever. Like it was a huge risk, but it paid off. Yeah, it's funny sometimes you, we how we don't listen to those gut instincts though yeah. when we're in business. We, you know, we for me, I remember years ago I had all my leads were coming in through a, a developer, and I hadn't looked anywhere else. It was just so easy, and you know, and and I got complacent, and and then when they did dry up, I was stuck with sort of nothing coming and I knew my gut instincts was telling me you need to do more you need to be looking outside of this little comfort zone that you're in here and it dried up suddenly and I was left with you know with nothing nothing happening so yeah it's funny how we we, sometimes we really need to tune into that gut instinct oh the intuition is far stronger than any I think it plays a part in the strategy of your business 
and I've read a little bit about intuition recently and it's just so true. You've got to trust your gut. If you know that it's not right, then as hard as it is, because it was really, really hard. Yeah. Letting go of that. And I worked so hard to get that connection. Like, and I'd been doing it for four years and it was the best thing to happen in my career at the time. But then I realized that if I was going to do this properly, that had to go to free up time to spend doing things that lit me up. And also my time isn't like abundant, like my children aren't in childcare. They are mostly with me. So I have got systems and processes and everything set up in my business now, which I had before I had kids that really make it quite easy. Yeah. So oh, it's not easy, but. <laughs> Can you maybe just share a little, a couple of those with us with even like what your ideal day or week looks like a little bit, just so that any, cause I do have some new business owners who are just starting their own property management businesses with yeah. young children. So yeah, I think it'd be really valuable for them to sort of hear some of those systems and processes that you use to integrate the family and your work life. Yeah. So I use a calendar booking system, which I know that you do too. And I have that completely automated. So it's integrated with a lot of programs where I don't need to send out reminders for meetings. Everything just gets scheduled in automatically. I've got a really great website that is actually about to get a refresh. The new website is shit hot and it's about to go live. So I'm really, really excited, but I've got some systems in there where people can book in a time with me without me doing anything. They get signed up to my database without me doing anything. And I've got some great lead magnets, actually. That's what they're called. That actually helps small business owners. And I'm really proud of those. One of them that might help your audience is the 10 essentials every small business marketing plan needs. And it's just a checklist for you to look over and you can get that from my website. And so everything there is automated. What else do I do? Do you use Calendly? Calendly? Is that your? Uh, I use Acuity. Acuity. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so I use Calendly. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. And what else do I do? So I schedule certain days of the week for meetings only. So that's a Wednesday and here we are today's Wednesday. And it's also a Tuesday afternoon. Fridays is my CEO day. That is just, that is a meeting free day. Thursdays, Mondays are my children days, obviously Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday mornings with the kids. And so the week is really structured where I have those designated days and it serves me so well. And then, yes, okay, I do work some nights and that's my choice and I love what I do. So I'm, I'm okay to do that. It also keeps me sane because they're so small, but yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I structure my week very similar. I only do meetings Tuesdays and Thursdays. Usually Mondays is my CEO day. Yeah. Wednesdays is my podcast day. So yeah, I, that, and that really works for me. Otherwise I find I, I've got sort of three businesses on the go at the moment. Yes. I'm just kind of jumping from one thing to the other and I don't actually get a lot done. So yeah, that's and really you... good advice. If you are anything like me, you think you know your rent roll numbers. Well, I thought I did until I had a rent roll health check and I was quite literally shocked. The money I was leaving on the table was astounding. And this is not something that I'm proud to admit. There were mismanagement fees, let fees, advertising and lease renewal fees not being charged and properties even without bonds. And all of this was happening despite monthly audits being conducted in my business. So how did I uncover all these gaps in my valuable income? Well, I had a rent roll due diligence from my good friend Tazi, aka the Rent Roll Queen and founder of the Tazi Way a specialist in rent roll due diligence, business valuation and management rights. The Tazi Way is the innovative force driving the real estate industry. With 25 years of business and real estate acumen, they find gaps and risks in your agency to find undiscovered value. If you'd like to book your business in for a rent roll due diligence, head to the link in the show notes and mention That Property Mum for a 10% discount. If you're ready to be a super organized, focused and productive property manager, buckle up because Colmeo is about to revolutionize the way that you work. Colmeo is the driving force behind property management excellence in residential real estate. Now picture this, a comprehensive end-to-end -end system 
designed to be the beating heart of your property management tasks, manage your properties, owners and tenants, and handle payments, inspections, and even marketing listings without leaving the platform. Comio is designed to be an all-in-one solution to all your property management needs. And here's the game changer. Colmeo isn't just software. It's been awarded the most innovative prop tech, scale up in 2023. Yes, you heard it right. Colmeo has been recognized for their groundbreaking approach to property management software. How good is that? So property managers, whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, dive into the future of property management with Colmeo. You can book in a demo with the team today and go in their weekly draw for a Prezi gift card worth $100. All you need to do is to head to the link colmio.com forward slash that property mum and colmio is K-O-L-M-E-O. You have to. And then with those booking systems, like you can, with those times where people can schedule in a free strategy session with me, I've put parameters around that. So they can't do it on those days. So I have no worry that something's accidentally going to fall into my calendar. It is completely set up to be soundproof. Yeah. Which is perfect. That is amazing. Yeah. The, the, the technology and software, I think, you know, Sometimes people don't have the time to actually look into, you know, ways to automate their lives. And that is something that has been a massive game changer for me is, you know, like you said, you know, getting those leads fed automatically from your website into your database or getting notified when someone purchased a product and having an e another email sent to them, you know, leading them into something more. All of that is really important and valuable for busy entrepreneurs yeah. and business owners. Um, so. I want to say one more thing, which isn't about business, but I always look at ways where I can like shrink the time. Right. And so a game changer in my life, and this is for all of the people in business with young children is my Amazon subscription. And you're going to be like, what? <laughs> but I have nappies on reorder. They just come. I don't have to think about it baby wipes, paper towels, tissues, like all of the non-perishable stuff is on reorder and it is done and it gets delivered. And it was the best thing I ever did because I was like, oh no, I've got a pram in the back. I've got this, I've got that. How am I going to fit like one or two boxes of nappies? Cause I don't want to come back here frequently. This is a few years ago now. And it was like, you know what? And then obviously, yeah, it just gets delivered to my door. It's the best. <laughs> that is a great tip. A great mum hack. I yeah, love it. Just yeah. life in general, because these things take up time. And so what can you do to not take up time? So you can actually spend more time working in your business or getting a massage or like whatever that is really, because you need to fill your cup too. So Absolutely. That is so true. That's great advice. Now, you are also a bit of a marketing and social media guru. So, and something I read on your website, which I really loved and really resonated with me because it's something that I am working on at the moment myself. And have you read the book Story Brand? Um, I think it's I Miller. It. Yeah. Yes, but um, I haven't read all of it, but yeah, yeah. He's, he's wonderful. Yeah. And it's, and again, it's all about this, you know, building your own personality and story into your marketing. So talk to me about the importance of that because it's not all about strategy when it comes to marketing these days. So, and especially online marketing, I think, you know, people want to do, well, one of the things that I'm always think about is people want to do business with, with you, not the brand. Do you, yeah. is that something you ad advocate for as well? Oh, honestly, I think everything is changing and customers really want to be spoken with, not spoken to. By having that, that means you need to be really good at storytelling. People are nosy, right? So they want to know about you as well. And when they know more about you, it's that no like trust factor, right? So you've got to get really good at storytelling. And if you're sitting there thinking, if you're listening to this, I'm not going to bear my soul. I'm not prepared to do that. I don't do that. I don't share my children on my social media. I don't do any of that except for I do have a strategy in place to enable me to be able to storytell without burying my soul. And I think that is what is the 
pipe block for a lot of business owners because they don't want to bear their soul. They want to story tell. Everyone keeps saying it, but how do you do that? If you don't want to share your kids, share your house. I don't share the inside of my house. I do all of this and I'm still growing without that part. I share my husband, yes, with his permission, but not frequently. So it's about adding in content pillars that light you up, that are an extension of your brand that can help tell the story. And everything is a story, right? So there's a really good formula for making up a caption, so to speak, because that's the one thing that is the constant churn. And that is really having a great hook. And by that is is that one sentence, not even, that entices someone to press see more. And then telling your story, whatever it is you have to say, and then having a great segue into a call to action, which is around your business. You have to tell people what you want from them because, you know, we don't know these things. We're served with a million pieces of content and marketing thrown at us every day as soon as we leave our house billboards, like bus shelters, you know, shops or whatever. So if you want somebody to share your content with their friends, you have to tell them. If you are launching something new, you have to tell them, sign up to my email list, you know, download this because it's free and it will help you do this, 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 and this. And it's more about benefits to people rather than the features of what it is that you have to do. Yeah, I uh, absolutely love that. And that is definitely the social media strategy that we teach as well to our clients in, in my done for you social business. So yeah, that's amazing. So when we talk about building st- story into it, though, do you have a framework or something that you work off? Or, it would, or does that come down to the content pillars? Because what happens, I find a lot in real estate, as I, I mentioned before we jumped in, a lot of people talk about their properties they've just listed, or they've just sold, or they're, they've just leased them. And and that can be just every day is one yeah. or the other of the which, you know, does not encourage a lot of people, unless it's like a you know, freak property or an amazing, you know, different sort of unique property, then you might click through. But most of the time you're scrolling past that. Yeah. Like straight away, I, I just thought of, like, and I'm quite creative, is, you know, you can talk about like the suburbs that these properties are in first and lead in with that. But I just taught a masterclass actually on messaging and being conversational and intentional. And there was a massive list I put together of hooks, of ways to tell stories and calls to action that are interesting. So when you can start to develop a bit of a bank of how to start the sentence, then I think you can set yourself up for like really great storytelling. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Not absolutely. really. My framework, <laughs> you, that's what you said. I'm like, I got sidetracked. My framework, I think that I, it's bigger picture, right? So it's not just about socials and storytelling. It's more well-rounded marketing and it always comes back to that. So my business had a rebrand. It used to be called Social Soul and that's what I focused on. And then I morphed more into my personal brand because I'm a brand manager and marketer. I have a marketing degree. Like I have spent years working on some of the biggest brands in the world. And I realized that the conversations were always bigger than just social media because at the end of the day, it's just rented space. You don't own your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, um, TikTok. You don't own those. And so it's rented. So you have to get really good at marketing, not just social media. So there's a bigger picture. So it comes down to my framework really is figuring out what my client's marketing foundations are and getting those set up so that they are clear about what they are. The next part is having all of their digital assets in complete alignment. And that does include social media, but it also includes web. It also includes Google. It also includes, there's a whole heap of things. So, you know, if 99% of people will Google you before they pick up the phone. And, you know, I went to an event last week where I got this beautiful gift bag, like goodie bag, and it was the best goodie bag I've actually ever received at an event. It had wine, it had hand cream, candles, like chicken rub like it had so much stuff in where it. is this event I want to go I know. <laughs> and it was there was a lot of like little flyers with like you know discount codes and all the rest of it and I was like you know what I love supporting local businesses I'm going to go through each of them and google them and see what they're all about I swear 
I have never felt so like light bulb moment. There's a gap in the market here because I would land on some of these websites and I would have no idea what they did straight away. And I was upset and like these are small businesses trying to make it. But the number one thing that they failed to see is when people land on their website, they don't have who they are. Well, they have who they are, but who they help and how they do it. So it's like, do you, are you a gym? Are you a day spa? Like, what are you? How can I, I want to give you my money, but you're making it difficult. So that was like one thing. So that's why I say, you know, and it just confirmed everything for me that you need to make sure that your digital assets are in complete alignment because you can't give someone a flyer and then they Google you and you're like a different person on your website. So that's important. And then number two, your website is like your suit and tie. Your socials are like your shorts and t-shirt. So, you know, it's not just one thing. It takes all the things and people want to know what that shorts and t-shirt looks like, especially if they're going to give you their money. Absolutely. We say with a property management or a real estate business, what, uh, and somebody's sitting there thinking, you know, I don't know how to, what to do for marketing. I don't know what, where to get started. What would advice would you give them um, um, apart from to you and, um, yeah. or downloading one of your oh, freebies? Um, yeah. What would you say to them? Are there maybe, you know, two or three trends or things that they should get focused on or start working on today? Well, have a good hard look in your backyard first. So website is hugely important. And is it readable? That's one of the biggest things for me, which is, you know, hi, I'm Haley. I help X, Y, Z do X, Y, and Z. Here's how. Okay. So Google will give you ranking if your website is readable. And so you take people on that journey of your brand and you are there with a smile. You, your words communicate how you do in real life, because then when they finally meet you, which in your business, real estate agents meet a lot of people, you're the same person. And I've had that quite often where people say, wow, you're exactly the same in real life as you are on your website. I was like, yeah, because it's on purpose. (laughs) That's me. They're my words, but it's taken like years of practice to be able to do that. But if you can get good at looking in your backyard, and one thing I've found quite a bit with small business owners is that we're so close to our businesses that we can't see them anymore. And so, you know, investing in help, will help your trajectory get to where you want to go far quicker. So, you know, the likes of you, if you've been thinking about, you know, if you're listening, thinking about working with Kylie, I think it's a no brainer, like to your specialist in this area, it's a no brainer to like get help and then watch your business grow. That's my number one advice. That's what I did and it worked and, you know, you don't know what you don't know and you are close and that's not healthy for your growth. I yeah I've had to reach out and get lots of support and done yeah. sat in lots of marketing and social media classes and yeah done followed all the you know the, the big names around the globe and you know you take little bits from everybody that you listen to and that's the beauty of podcasts too you know you sit and you know listen to to little bits of information and yeah like your light bulb moment looking at websites you have that something shifts and changes and can make a huge difference in your business yeah massive massive yeah oh so Um, many things i know (laughs) i know know, know. it's a lot right so people think that they can achieve something and have a complete turnaround in a week it's not like that it's an ongoing process and you know when you up level new devil so you need to upskill yourself at the same time and it's just the nature of the beast Absolutely. Now, I love personal development. Can you share a tool or resource, a podcast or something that you think um, will help our audience today? Yeah. So one thing that I always say is done is better than perfect. That's my line. And I sprinkle that on all of my postcards and notepads and everything that I send out because it's true where you start is not where you finish. So keep that in the back of your mind that done is better than perfect. Get it done, put it out there, and then you'll figure out like the next steps and where you're going to go because of that. Another one is Canva is your best friend. So learn how to use that well. And a podcast I've been listening to a lot lately is Brooke Castillo. She runs the Life Coach School podcast. And in terms of like 
personal development, mental health, life hacks, just strength building, because you do need to be really resilient in business. I feel like that is such a gorgeous podcast. And she's from the US. If you don't know Brooke, she turns over about, I don't know, $60 million a year in her business, (laughs) maybe a bit more. (laughs) So she's fun to listen to. Like she's really cool. I like her or my podcast. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, well, that is, it is, I, I love the market. You've got some great marketing advice on your podcast. So, but well, that's leads perfect segue into my next question, which is how can our audience connect further with you? Yeah. So an easy way is to listen to me in your ears over on the Hayley Osborne show, which is my podcast. I have an episode every single week and we just hit a hundred episodes, which I'm so proud of. I can't believe that. And or on my website, there's a couple of awesome tools there that will help you. One is 10 Essentials Every Small Business Marketing Plan Needs. So that is just like a simple checklist. Another one I share is all the equipment that I use in my business as well, which is really helpful. So there's a couple of different ways. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's about it. I'll share all the links in the show notes to those and I look forward to seeing your new website when it launches. Make sure you share that with me. Yeah. And thank you so much for connecting with me. We actually met at a planning, end of year planning sort of business retreat and yeah, hit it off and had very similar ideas and energy. Yeah. And, and I thought sort of you were amazing. <laughs> Likewise. So I'm I'm glad to have you on the podcast and I can't wait to share this episode with our community. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Kylie. There's been so much talk of stress, overwhelm and burnout in property management lately. Do you want to know how I overcame all of that? Yes, I hit rock bottom multiple times, but I got myself a virtual assistant. Actually, not just one, but three. But I didn't just get any VA. I got a PMVA. What are they? Well, they are the most well-trained in the business. And not only that, you also have a backup VA. So that essentially, your business is never without admin support ever again. And my health, time and business has never looked back. Your PMVA can take care of tasks like rent arrears, lease preparation and renewals, maintenance follow-up, routine inspection bookings, data entry, audits, prospecting, inbox management, and so much more. And the best part of implementing a PMVA in my business was that it freed up my time and my team's time to take care of important things like customer service. What makes me feel so safe is that PMVA is owned by Tiffany Botel, both here and in the Philippines, making my data secure and giving me more control over the VA arrangement. So head to the link in the show notes to book in your discovery call with Lady Boss Tiff. One thing I dread doing is chasing up rent arrears and debt collection. It takes up valuable time and it can often lead to conflict, but it is a necessary evil when you are running a property management business. But there is an easier way to make sure your tenant's rent is paid on time and in advance, and it's called RentPay. RentPay is a secure and simple to use payment platform that saves agents time and money with fast, accurate receding while making life better for renters. To top it all off, you'll never have to worry about dishonor fees or unknown deposits again. How good is that? Cleared funds are deposited straight into your bank account in a single daily payment with accurate receding and reference numbers auto-assigned and it's fully compatible with all trust accounting systems. It's a super flexible payment option for tenants who can pay rent in multiple ways, including direct debit, credit card, or instantly pay with payer ID. Fees are minimal and rent pay even helps with the rent arrears process by automating reminders to renters when payments are due or missed. If you are currently paying large bank fees, struggling with constant dishonors because the funds aren't cleared when their funds land in your trust or wasting time chasing up unknown payments, I encourage you to book in a free demo with RentPay and give yourself and your renters an easier way to pay rent. 
Can I ask you a quick favor before you leave this episode? Now we all know how important reviews are for businesses these days and mine is no different. If you could spare just a minute to follow, rate and review this podcast, it would mean a lot to me. In fact, what would get me super excited is if you share this podcast with someone in the industry who you think might need to hear some of the episodes right now. And if you'd like to find out more about working with me or any of the products I have to help you start, grow or scale your property management business, head to my website, thatpropertymum.com.au or check out the links in the show notes.